And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Rest in the Lord. Amen. And now we say, One God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and all the things of heaven and earth, and in the name of one Lord.
in any way. Certainly, this is no casting of lots or happen chance. So, what is God really looking for? I'd like to suggest this evening, my friends, that God is looking for the opportunity to be part of our human experiences and our life's journey. God always sees the broken pieces in our journey. He hears our every silent cry, and he comes in to be the plaster and the medication to our bruises. God always, and without question, knows when any of us are at our breaking points, and when we are in need of a touch of supernatural intervention. And more often than not, God's interventions and the people who God chooses to use are among those that we would least expect. Those persons who may not fit our limited definitions of the persons that God is supposed to use. The people that seem strange to us that God will use to accomplish His purposes. Jesus Himself did not fit that mold in his name. He too could be considered an outsider. The boy born in a stable. The outcast rabbi, perhaps, would be an appropriate title for our Lord. When Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he didn't see the man of stature. He didn't see the man of wealth. He didn't see the hated tax collector. Jesus saw someone who was on the fringes, someone shunned because of his difference. And while we would often define and picture our past as, some, as someone at the lower levels of a societal strata, our caste can be found, my friends, brothers and sisters, at every level. When I am not standing behind the pulpit, I have the quote-unquote privilege of working with a night club. And one night, I saw a young lady that I know, someone that I would have worked with, come through our camps. And, and I looked at her. I'm not saying I might not have parted at some point in my life, but I looked at the young lady and I just wanted to cry. Here is one of my people, perhaps one of my children, who was unable for whatever reason to hear the message that Jesus had for her. My friends, and even in that same moment, another young man of a wealthy stature, he himself troubled and hurt, got himself into a ridiculous fight one night. So it's just to remind us that Regardless of what a person looks like, we do not know what is going on inside of them. I want to suggest again that when our outcast Savior looked upon Zacchaeus in that tree, he saw a brother, a fellow religious outcast, disowned by those who consider themselves the very chosen people of the Almighty God. And what's interesting that the theme tonight is that of our past. Because in my own personal experience, I am not one of those who was born, quote unquote, or baptized at a young age into the Presbyterian body. I was one of those rare ones that came from our Pentecostal brothers into our Presbyterian faith. And in my first, one of my early appointments, I went into one of our congregations as in my early days of late day preachers some 20 years ago. And I walked into a congregation and I introduced myself. And I was faced with three questions. The first question was this. Are you in the right church? The second question was, are you sure it's the, the name of the area? So and so church? And I said yes. And the third question said with more force, are you sure it's the Presbyterian Church? I said, yes, I am in the right place. But there I was in a community of faith 
that had not grown for whatever reason, perhaps the members had not seen themselves more than the community they had already known. And I was here, taking that pulpit for the first time, the outsider on the outside, coming to do something perhaps I'm not supposed to do. And my friends, if we consider even that age that we in theology learn as the age of enlightenment, in a conversation with one of my colleagues abroad, the Reverend Dr. Althea Spencer Miller, she asked the question, how can I call this the age of enlightenment when the age of enlightenment was also the age of slavery? What is it in there for me to be enlightened about? My friends, for many, that truly was an age of oppression, an age of being outcast, an age of being on the outside. But I want to remind us this evening that that same Jesus whose name was used to defend all these great atrocities against humankind, it is the same very real and very present Jesus who would have numbered himself among outcasts of his thieves. It is the same Jesus who does not stand in judgment, but he stands with us, side by side, as our friend. And while much of the discourse this week will center upon the mercy that God has for each of us, I ask all of us tonight who have been wronged, in any way perhaps even by our faith communities, through history and even in recent times, as difficult as it may be, to be merciful to those who have wronged us in any way. Let us, like Jesus, who accepted the invitation of an outcast, accepted the invitation of one who was despised, generously respond and say yes. Yes, we welcome you. Perhaps a challenge to forget how we were wrong. But yes, we in the spirit of unity, we welcome, we forgive, we love you. And yet we ask that all of us, together as one, never ever cease to be at home with those who are different. Never cease to welcome the wind. Never cease to welcome the orphans. Never cease to welcome the poor. Never cease to welcome the strange person that stands at the back of our church and sanctuary doors. And even those whose ideologies may seem strange to us and it's difficult for us to accept. Even they we are called to receive with open arms. Even they we are called to accept mercifully in love, in compassion, in understanding. Let us, my friends, as a merciful community of faith, and I use the word community in singular, as we are all one under the blood of Jesus Christ, let us as a community of faith ensure, ensure that not a single person would feel so despised, would feel so rejected that they would find the need to climb tree, that he will not have to look somewhere else for refuge, that he will not have to look somewhere else to find dignity. I invite us tonight to let salvation come right where they are, for we and they are God's people wherever they are. God bless you.
through thy only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to whom to be written over the Holy Spirit be glory and dominion, both now and ever, and world without end. Heavenly Father, we are here this evening, your body, so different in the area of worship, yet in the unity of your Holy Spirit, we gather here this evening, knowing that your presence is among us, for which we thank you, God. Father, in all things you said give thanks and we honor you. We magnify your name. And Lord God, we remember your word because your word says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive them your sin and leave their land. We, Lord God, must humble ourselves. And today, as an act of humility, we gather here from various churches together in the unity of your Holy Spirit. Father, we declare that your word is sovereign. So we repent and for all that we have done and not here and left undone to our brothers and our sisters whereby we did not understand. But now we pray, Lord God, that you will bring understanding to the diversity and bring us into a place of unity and harmony in your spirit. Lord, the cross unites us. The blood shed on the cross cleanses and purifies all of us as we come before you in humility and harmony of your Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth and revelation, bringing and uniting your people in oneness of spirit. Father God, we do not look at the tag we wear, but we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Bring us into one purpose, that which will call all cause us to say, Papa, Father, eternal God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, whose blood was shed on the cross, for each and every one of us, in whatever church or dispensation we are, we are yours. Give us that filial love to love one another as you loved us. And the agape that is poured out from you, banding us together in the tender embrace that you put around us this evening, that closeness that we feel, that Lord, that we know it can only come from your presence, enveloping us in the oneness of your heart. Father, we thank you that the seed of the soul now will germinate and grow and become a steadfast plant of the, the green bay tree spreading across this land, bringing all the other churches that are outside of this ambit of the six that we are. But you will know that we will know that you are God and besides you there is no other. And the works of the enemy that will seek to mitigate that which you are starting, we pull down now in the name of Jesus and we cancel every assignment that will rise up against what you are establishing here now in the name of Jesus. And we say, Father God, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven among these six churches and that will only be a nucleus for what is to come. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Because you said you will accomplish what we ask in this day. And we give you praise and honor in your precious name we pray. Hallelujah to the risen Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now we invite uh, the uh, Roman Catholic Church, Monsignor.
Oremus Dominus Obiscum. Eternal and gracious God, you created us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. You appointed us on this earth so that we can work with you for the completion of your creation. Today, gathered as we are, we bring before you at this time the many men and women who do not have a job, who cannot find a job, who recently have lost their job. We tell of God, you know, the pain in their heart, the pain in their heart that echoes your own pain when one of your sons or daughters does not have a job or work, is not able to share in continuing your creative and upbuilding work. Today we come before you, Heavenly Father, and we ask you to touch the hearts of all of us that we, working together, one with the other, will find a way to share ourselves, to open our hearts, our offices, our fields, our opportunities, to allow others to share our work so that all your people can find employment. Bless this nation, O oh God, as today and during this week we of these churches unite in prayer, calling upon your name in unity, praying for all your people, that through our ministry and the ministry of this week of prayer, others will know the power, the joy, the privilege of finding and doing the employment assigned to them. We pray, O oh God, for a healing in this land. We pray, O oh God, that you deliver us from the selfishness that makes a few of us want to keep everything for ourselves, even if others have to suffer. Deliver us, O oh God, from the greed that denies others of their fair share. Bless this land. Bless the station, O oh God. Father God, even though when your son came, he had no place to rest his head. But it is your desire that every family, every person has a home, a place to rest at head. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the homeless among us. Those who find it difficult to pay their rent, their mortgage. Those who are put out of their house. Those who are left on the streets. Those who are discarded by those of us who want more rent, more mortgage. Those of us who make life difficult and exclude others from a place of shelter. Bless the station, O oh God. There is enough space in our land that every man, woman, and child, every family can have adequate shelter, can have a proper house. And we pray, O oh God, that our environments, our communities, our various housing areas will be places of peace, of joy, of happiness. Deliver all our housing communities of tensions that divide and cause undue stress. We pray, O oh God, that the unemployed and the un those who don't have houses, O oh God, will truly find a way through the prayer that we offer, but even more so through the mercy that you have. That your mercy will be manifest in the increasing employment among our people. That your mercy will be manifest where more and more people have places to stay, have houses to live, a cover, a shelter over them. We make this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Salvation Army. Father of grace and mercy, we go before your throne this evening. Thank you, O God, for sparing our life that we're able to be within these walls, this holy ground. We pray, God, as we continue to fellowship, that you will be with us, God. We bring before you as well the families of this country of Trinidad and Tobago, God. And this evening, I want to pray specifically the men within these families. I pray, oh God, for the men to be in these families. Too often we look around, God, and we realize that the men are absent within the homes. I pray, oh God, that they will stand up and play an active role in being the head of the home. I pray, oh God, that they will be supporter, provider, protector for their families, God. I pray, oh God, that the spirit of absenteeism will be demolished and dissipated, oh God. And young men, middle-aged men, old men will see it fit to take care of their wives and take care of their children. I pray, oh God, that you will intervene divinely, oh God, on, on our behalf this evening. We pray, oh God, that truly the men of this country, oh God, will begin to set an example for the younger ones coming up, knowing, God, that they are the head of the home. I pray, Father God, for the children within these homes, God, that you will so give them a steadfast spirit that they will hunger and they will thirst after righteousness. And scripture tells us, God, that you will quiver thirst and hungers after righteousness indeed shall be filled. And so we pray, O oh God, for a filling of your people, O oh God. We pray for the women within these homes that truly they will find work, O oh God, that they will, their hands will not become idle, their lips will not become idle, but their children will rise and call them blessed. Scripture tells us, O oh God, that beauty is fleeting, O oh God, but a woman who fears God is to be praised. And so, Father, you have given us the blueprint, O oh God, for what the family should resemble. And I pray, O oh God, that we will find our way back to this. Father, be with us. Even as we leave this house of worship, God, I pray that you will journey with us soon. I pray in all the name, but through the strong and mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Now we invite our Christmas of the American Church. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Pray for the sick. Almighty and eternal God, give us life and health. We know that prayer begins in the heart of God, and it has the power to change the world. And because of this, Lord, we come to you with prayer for the sick. We ask you, Mr. God, to give your healing to those for whom our prayers are open. May they be strengthened in their time of peace and have confidence in your loving care. We implore the aid of your tender mercy, that healing restore the bodily health in the gift thanks in your church. Heavenly Father, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their trouble, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Feeling sick, Lord, and their spirit and sad work and daily activity. So their pain, ease their worry and frustration. Give them peace and comfort as they await your healing. Most most of all, give strength to those who minister to the needs of the sick, that they too may find favor in your ministry, and minister to them with your words in faith. Gracious God and Savior, we offer these prayers to you as all those who may not even be physically sick, but have challenges in keeping focus on you that they could not keep their minds straight. We implore you, Lord, to keep their minds right 
so that the sick actions of these persons will be removed from their mind and as a result from our land. Father God, your words say it. The prayer of faith shall be blessed. We come to you today in faith, asking that you heal us. Lord, heal our land. Take away every sickness, disease, and illness. And we receive our healing by faith because we ask these mercies in faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives on the name of you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Have a Father, Daddy God, we come to you this evening as your children. And we come to lift up your children, those in this moment who are faced with a setting stone of exams in this season. Father God, we pray that your hand will be upon them, that you will bring back to their attention all that they have learned, all that they have studied that you would ease them in the moments of their exam, you would comfort them, you would study their hands, their minds, and their nerves, that they, O oh God, can do all that they need to do to move on to the next step of their life journey. Father God, we pray that they know that they can turn to you even in the most difficult of moments. And we pray for them, not even in the season of exams alone, but for all troubles and situations that they too would face in their young lives. Some that they would share with us as leaders, as parents, as friends and family, and some that they hold within themselves. But let them know they can raise their voice to our other father, our daddy God, our mother God, who opens his arms like a mother and opens her wings to her children. Father God, hear and answer the prayers of your people, hear and answer the prayers of your children. Bless, hold, and anoint as only you can. May your Holy Spirit continue to be with them. May the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be upon them. And Father, may they always know that you are there in the midst of us, above, below, behind, and all around us. Bear our prayer, for it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Standing while we recite the Lord's prayer, we give to His apostle our Father. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done to the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the
Aí você quer se ver na guerra deles, se eles se Excuse me, um, yes. On Friday, we have the general... In addition to the important service tomorrow, on Friday, we have the general secretary of the Caribbean Conference of Churches who will be joining us at our Lady of Perpetual Health to give some closing remarks. So it is an acknowledgement by the Caribbean Conference of Churches, which is an important body of humanism in our region. He will be with us on Friday evening too. So tomorrow is for young youths and not so young youths. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, by now, now we have the benediction and dismissal and we have some of the minister, the minister to... Uh, after we have, uh, I prefer after the closing him, the dismissal we have a closing him, and then we have prepared like Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Indeed, we thank you. We thank you for this moment of worship. We thank you for this moment of oneness, this moment of unity, where we are all gathered together one body under Christ. And we pray, O oh God, that what has been produced here in this day and this week will not fall in this moment, but truly we shall seek to be together as one as we go ahead in the days and the times and in the seasons to come. That you will continue to bless us and be among us, be within us as we seek your face together as one. I declare as a servant of God, even as you are faithful with your life, faithful with your finances, God's blessing shall outpour upon you. I declare that your children shall not be a source of pain, but a source of joy. I declare whatever you put your hands to shall come to fruition in God's time. I declare that you shall be the head and not the tail. I declare that when there is a choice for good, that you shall go and not the other. I declare the time of evil that the wicked shall go in your stead. And now may the same God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant equip you with every good thing for doing his will, and may he work within you that which is pleasing unto him, to whom be all glory, honor, and praise this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Father, and now we are like to dismiss, but we like now protocol is that we let our leaders uh, sing for you first an Ethiopian song. We say it's the first Christmas song, Glory to God in Heaven and an Earth, Peace is Good with His Men. The reason, the meaning of that is that when the angels, uh, the, while Christ was in the manger, they were still seeing him on his throne in heaven. So they shouted, Glory to God in Heaven and on earth, peace and goodwill towards them. And God bless you. So the leaders will go and meet the people, and then we we'll look forward to outside. On the tent, we have to like the question. <laughs>